Hi, my name is Janae Darius Strand. I'm the curatorial associate here at the Brooklyn Museum and the Feminist Center. And I was the co-curator of Really Free, the Radical Art of Nellie Mae Rowe that's presented at the Brooklyn Museum. The exhibition title came from a pamphlet that Nellie Mae Rowe wrote her name on. And it was a pamphlet that she took from a service at church. And it was typewritten, Really Free. And next to it, she wrote her name, Nellie Mae Rowe. And I love that because throughout the exhibition, you see Nellie Mae Rowe ingraining her life and interjecting her life in American narratives of freedom. So there's a constant reiteration of Nellie Mae Rowe searching for freedom, defining freedom for herself. But the radicality portion of the exhibition's title comes from the ways in which she moves through the world. So as a black woman living in rural Georgia, living in the South, she exuded a, what we would call a radical hospitality. She would invite anyone and everyone to her home that she called the Playhouse, and that was baffling. For a woman who existed in her social ethos, that was amazing and certainly radical. Nellie Mae Rowe doesn't use political avenues and social commentary often, but when she does, it's still uniquely vibrant and intimately her own aesthetic. During Nellie Mae Rowe's life, she was certainly belabored by the requirements of her social environment. So one of which was working on her family farm when she was growing up, and she would have to quit school in order to do so. Another of which was being married twice and certainly widowed twice. And because of her marriages, she operated in a traditional um, wifely manner. And so she had to cook and clean and, and sort of tend to the requirements of her relationship. But she also was a domestic laborer for a white family. And it was not until the passing of both of her husbands and thus the passing of the family that she worked for that she said, I'm going to return to my childhood. And that means I'm going to play in my playhouse. The Playhouse is the home that her second husband had built for them to live in, and upon his passing, Nellie Mae Rowe took her creative genius and exploded it onto the walls and onto the yard in which she lived. After Nellie Mae Rowe passed away, her home was demolished. And unfortunately, that's the reality for many folks, not only artists, but in our current social ethos, the rise of gentrification. And throughout Nellie Mae Rowe's life, you see her reclaiming a creative vision that was certainly present when she was a child, but also reclaiming a sense of self that she wasn't able to fully lean into when she was moving throughout the world. In one piece that I'm thinking of called Untitled Voting, you see Nellie Mae Rowe in a picture. She's in the center of the image and she's surrounded by her dolls. But in the drawing that surrounds the picture, she has a hand expressing the right to vote, expressing and engaging in voting. She also depicts a figure who's menacingly looking on the side, who possibly is condemning black people for expressing their right to vote. And I love this because Nellie Mae Rowe doesn't often comment on social issues or her famous saying is, it is what it is, when she was approached with what did the work mean? But when she did, she did it intentionally. And she did it uniquely, vibrantly. And what I hope for visitors when they enter into this exhibition is that they'll see work that they may not have envisioned being within a museum. Because museums often and historically have portrayed work of a certain um, aesthetic from a certain space, from a certain artist, or from a certain narrative. And Nellie Mae Rowe certainly disrupts the expected encounter when you walk into a museum.